one of the reasons that transition is so hard in your life is because everybody lost something in this last year. It, it could be a friendship. Um, many people lost a job this year. Everybody with money in the stock market lost some of that this year. Hello. Hello. And uh, some of you lost a dream this year. And it is in that context. This is crazy. It is in the context of loss that God calls Joshua to cross over to what's next. So the presence of God had to go before the people so that their eyes would not be fixed on what they lost this year. But so their eyes would be fixed on where God was leading them in the days ahead. I don't know who this is for, but God said, You can't get Moses back, but if you'll fix your eyes forward, that's the word forward. Shout it forward. Shout it again forward. Shove somebody say forward. Even if I have to push you forward, you can't stay stuck here. You can't cry over this anymore. Forward. The way of faith looks forward. In fact, I want you to say something about this year and just say it by faith. Just say it even if you don't know what this year holds. Just say it and if you don't want to say it, you don't have to. But for all the faith-filled people who want God to do amazing things in your life starting tomorrow, shout this. I'm looking forward to it. How can you say that? You don't even know what it is yet. But my promise doesn't concern what it is. He said, don't be terrified. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever, whatever, whoever. I'm looking forward to it. You know, I might have a challenge this year, but I'm looking forward to it. My challenge is going to give my God an opportunity to show off on my behalf. Come on, hot five somebody say, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Oh, I got it now. It takes a certain kind of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. What I hope for is out ahead of me, and whatever is behind me wasn't meant to go with me into this next season. I'm looking forward to it. your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Whatever's ahead of me, he wrote it, so I trust the next chapter because I know the author. I'm looking forward to it. I want to see how this turns out. I want to see how this turns out. The author and finisher of our faith. And you know how Jesus crossed It says in Hebrews that he endured the cross for the joy set before him, before him, before him. Don't let what's behind you make you miss what's before you. Not this year. Not this year. Man, I wish I could get those 40 years back that we wasted, but I can't look back at those 40 years. For the joy set before him. Give your faith something to look forward to this year. And don't let it just be heaven when you die. You know, Jesus taught me how to pray. He said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
My faith is looking forward, not to one day when I get out of here, but what he's going to do before I leave. I'm looking forward to it. I know, I know, I, I know it's going to be, I know it's going to be some unexpected challenges this year. I know it's going to be some things this year that I wouldn't choose to cross over. And you know, here's the thing, here's the thing. I can't choose every, every river I'm going to have to cross this year. But I do get to choose what I carry while I'm crossing it. And I mean to tell you that there are some things that you can't carry into this next year if you want to cross into the new one. You can't carry what happened. You can't carry. My faith looks forward. So I said the ark has to go before them. And if, they, if they'll keep their eyes on this ark that's out in the distance and not get stuck right here and be satisfied to know God on this level, but to look out beyond and say, we're next, God. I will do amazing things. So I need a faith that looks forward. And watch this. I need a faith that stands between. Again, the geographical context of this, this narrative is creating a brilliant psychological map for us to attack all of the mental barriers that we're up against in the coming year. And it said that the priest had to go out into the middle of the Jordan and stand there. Let me back up. You got you to check this out. It said that uh, God told Joshua, commanded Joshua, and verse 8, chapter 4, the Israelites did as Joshua commanded, took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, as the Lord had told Joshua, and they carried them over with them to their camp. i got to read fast because i got to end this sermon at midnight. And uh, it, 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 If it gets real good, we might just switch to like, uh, you know, Pacific Standard Time and, and you know, that midnight. There's several midnights. You know, it just depends on which clock we're watching. Watch this. Is that, um, Joshua said 12 stones that had been in the middle of the Jordan at the spot where the priests who had carried the Ark of the Covenant had stood. Wow. It said that the, the priest stood there. Look at verse 10. What kind of faith does this take? Now, the priest who carried the Ark remained standing. Boy, I like that phrase because that describes what some of us had to do this year. Just remain standing. Now look at the person next to you and be honest with them. Say, I didn't get everything right this year, but I remain standing. Come on, tell them real plain. Say, I'm still standing. And if I don't have any other reason to be thankful, the fact that I'm still standing in the depths of all the danger that I faced, I'm still standing. That's why I came to church and not to the club, because I wanted to thank the one who gave me something to I'm still standing. I'm standing and I'm still carrying what God put on my shoulders. I didn't drop the ark. I didn't neglect God. I didn't forsake him this year. I got it on my shoulders and I'm still standing carrying the, the ark. The ark. Man, I studied I studied about the ark so I could preach this right. Um, let's see if I could get a detail that'll help us. Um, what were they carrying? The ark. It was uh, made of acacia wood. Uh, I don't know if I can. Uh, um, it was 27 inches wide, 27 inches high, 45 inches long. I don't know, you know, I can make something up, but I don't really know the significance of those dimensions. I do know that God measures everything and He makes things to a certain dimension, but I don't think that's the point. Let's see. What else? What else? It was overlaid with gold. So it's a picture of the acacia wood, which is humanity, covered with gold, which is divinity, which symbolizes Jesus, who was wrapped in flesh, but covered in glory and full of grace and truth. But um, I don't think that's. I don't think that's the thing. It's something else. Okay, hold on, hold on. Just give me a minute. It's kind of late. I don't usually stay up this late. It was uh, 27. No, that's not it. Wood. 
Oh, yeah. On one end of that rectangular box that had the, 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 the law inside of it was a cherubim, like an angel, and on the other end was a cherubim. I think it says it in Exodus 25, 22, when God was telling Moses how to, how to build it. In Exodus, it said that there would be a cherubim on one side, cherubim on the other, and God said, There, everybody shot there. Above the cover, between the two cherubim that are over the ark, there, above the cover, between the two cherubim, there. I will meet with you. Touch somebody and say, God met me in the middle. That's what I need you to know. Is that God didn't wait for me to come out of my dysfunction to bless me and to touch me and to love me. God met me in the middle. I'm trying to say that you can't wait until you get everything you want to worship and glorify God who called you. He wants to meet you in the middle. In the middle. In the middle. Now let me do a check. Is there anybody who ever experienced a miracle in the middle? I'm going to come to this side because I didn't feel it over here. Is there anybody who ever had God do a miracle in the middle? Because my life is a testimony. It's not just about the start. It's not just about the finish. The blessing is in between. It's that I stood in the middle of the Jordan and what should have swallowed me up didn't sweep over me. That's the miracle. He met me in the middle. I'm preaching it because if you wait until you get there to praise him, you'll never get there because God will meet you when you praise him in the middle. Shout in the middle. In the middle. In the middle. And I stood in the middle of some stuff this year. And I stood in the middle of dysfunction this year. And I stood in the middle of some dark situations this year. And I remained standing in the middle. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.